All right, we're going to do our first article, which, like I said, is drone wings that are inspired by seagulls. And the problem that we really need to look at here for people that pilot UAVs, design and engineer UAVs, or drones, is that it's nearly impossible to maneuver a drone, or any aircraft for that matter, near obstacles in turbulent or variable environmental conditions. So when there's a lot of wind, when the air pressure changes a lot, Basically, planes and drones can only fly far away from obstacles because it's hard to control them in these turbulent conditions. So, like, the background here is that aircrafts and drones, as they're designed right now, are made for a specific environment, like a specific set of conditions, right? And what you really want to do is make it adaptable, just like birds in the wild can change the formation of their wings, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's that's right where I was going next is... This research is from Christina Harvey. She's a PhD student at U Michigan, and basically the way she wrote her article, she's like basically upset about how you know UAVs and drones engineers we can spend you know years developing this technology, and the pinnacle of this technology we've developed can't even fly nearly as well as a bird does. So. She said, look at birds. They can seem to do all these navigations with ease. They can glide near obstacles. They can evade predators. They can fly in storms without any issue. So what can birds do that our UAVs can't? And the main key to this, you know, level of control and stability that they have in their flight is that they have morphable wings. So they can change shape in multiple planes um, and in multiple surfaces. So it allows them to get extra stability and extra control without losing their ability to fly. Um, Let's take a step back real quick, right? I I love that she's so upset about this and she's come up with this project to address it. But I I, want to pick your brain a little bit. Why do you think this hasn't been implemented yet? Like what? Aviation has been going on for over a century now since the Wright brothers had their first flight, right? Why do you think that hasn't been implemented yet? Well, The biggest challenge, in my opinion at least, is that most modern aircraft store their fuel inside the wings. So we can't make these wings that morph shape a lot um, because they're also used as the fuel tank. So you don't want to compress the fuel or cut it off or, you know, deal with the dangers of having morphable wings where they also have, you know, jet fuel inside them. So um, that's probably one of the main reasons why it hasn't been implemented in aircraft so far, but it also, you know, lends credibility to doing this for UAVs that don't hold fuel in the wings if they're powered by batteries. Um, So that's actually where Christina Harvey, she's trying to learn from birds and apply it directly to drones first. So basically what she did is take a dive into how bird wings can morph, right? They can, you know, in some ways our aircraft wings can morph now. Flaps on the airplane you know, go up and down. And that's equivalent to just one of the ways that birds can move their wings. They can wiggle their feathers. They have, most birds have three joints in their wings, one at the tip, one at like near the elbow and one near the shoulder. So they have this three, three or four degrees of freedom and, you know, many drastic ways and shapes in which they can modify the shape of their wings. None of our aircraft wings can do that today. Um, So, one thing I was going to note is that this kind of reminds me of some fighter jets. They have a variable sweeping wing. So depending on where they are, you know, if they're fighting with another jet or if they're just cruising, they can move forward their wings or bring it back so that they have a lower aspect ratio. The lower aspect ratio is great for high speed and maneuvering very, very well. Whereas if it's forward, it's great for cruising because you're not going to use that much fuel, but it's not really high speed. So I guess that's another degree of freedom that has been explored by existing aircraft. But this research, Christina, wants to take it to the next level where you have 3D transformation. Yeah, looking at all these transformations in multiple planes. So the variable sweep sweep wings are like the shoulder joints on a bird, and the flaps flaps on a plane are like being able to move the feathers. But we haven't really had anything yet that takes into account, you know, the the tip of the wing, the elbows, the shoulders, and the ability to move the feathers. So what Christina Harvey did is she looked at all the different positions that a seagull wing joint could be in. So all the different joints, all the different positions, and then simulated airflow flying over that wing shape um, on a computer program. And she basically chose a few that she thought were really interesting for UAVs 
3D printed them and tested them in a wind funnel and that helped them further decide on a few different shapes that they want their UAV wings to be able to morph to. So they found a few key joint positions that were critical for stabilization in the first first uses in gusts of wind. So when, you know, there's a strong gust of wind, the a bird can fly stable without dropping altitude. Unlike planes, which in turbulence can drop thousands of feet in a matter of seconds, birds, usually when they get hit with a blast of wind, they fly completely stably. So that's one position that she wants to copy. The second one is during landing. So birds have much shorter landing paths compared to airplanes because they can back their wings up and curl the tips over and it helps them slow down quickly so they can land safely. So these two main things, the stabilization during wind and the ability to curl up the wings during landing. Those are the two that she wants to try and copy and bring into joint movements for UAV wings, in addition to the traditional gliding position. And see, that this kind of makes sense, and I'm happy you brought up how the main limitation, at least from your perspective so far, has been fuel in the wings. But as we move towards the next generation of transportation, especially for aerial transportation, we might have aircraft that are powered by batteries, maybe, and we've kind of discussed that in the past, or hydrogen fuel cells. Yeah. And with those configurations, this could definitely be something we can adapt to. It makes sense on an environmental level because you can have shorter runways, so you're taking up less of the environment to build airports. You can have more comfortable for flights for passengers like me who were very af- afraid of flying, especially because of turbulence, because of how much you're dropping up and down. And by, I guess, even making it more environmentally friendly when you don't have to spend that much fuel to maneuver difficult weather patterns as as your aircraft is flying. So, you know, on the horizon, we see this application, this technology in UAVs, which will allow us to fly drones in cities um, and in other areas safely. So you don't have to stay so far away from obstacles. And then in the long term, like you're saying, I would love to see this on passenger flight. Um, You know, drones are actually the perfect way to test it because they're almost a scale model of what this next generation of passenger aircraft will look like. Yeah. Yeah, I I love these articles and I love how we can start Make, I've said this before, but we can start making connections to topics we've discussed in the past. That's the best part. It's like we're building on the knowledge as we go. Yeah, and this this is almost exactly like our first episode, one of the topics from our first episode, learning how to fly um, Oh, from yeah, flies. from flies. Yeah. yeah. 